Well, this area is not just about a park, it's about a whole vibrant neighborhood that we're gonna be exploring in this video. A lot's gone down around here over the years that I'm gonna tell you about, so expect a few unfunny jokes, fun facts, bits of interesting history, sordid details, dodgy back streets, a bit of wildlife, plus a few unexpected surprises. Welcome to Lumpini. Well, it's a lovely day for a stroll here in Lumpini Park, and I came in via gate one on Wireless Road because it's a lot less busy around here than the main gates over at Saladeng intersection, which we'll be visiting a little bit later on anyway. Now, I've only been in the park five minutes and I've already seen some pretty impressive monitor lizard action. These reptiles roam free around the park. So if you see one crossing your path, if you're jogging, cycling, or strolling, don't be alarmed because they're harmless to humans, unless you corner one, which would not be a very wise thing to do anyway. So I'm not sure what to say here. Do I say Lumpini Park was built, constructed? Doesn't seem the right kind of descriptive word, really. Why don't I just say Lumpini Park was opened in 1925, 98 years ago. And originally it was a private garden belonging to King Rama VI. It was called Tung Saladeng or Saladeng Field. And King Rama VI wanted to celebrate the 15th anniversary of his accession to the throne in 1910. So he gifted it for public use to host an event called the Siam Rath Museum, an international trade fair to boost the economy because after World War I, the whole world was in a bit of a slump. But unfortunately, that event never took place due to the demise of King Rama VI in 1925. So they turned this field into Lumpini Park. Well, there are two fantastic reasons for me to absolutely love this brilliant sculpture here. One, it's called Sagittarius, and that is my star sign. This was built to celebrate the 80th birthday of King Rama IX and to celebrate the everlasting relations between Thailand and Japan. It's got all the star signs around a tortoise shell, and inside the tortoise shell is my second good reason to absolutely love this. There is a cat sleeping in it. Opposite the wireless road gate is the MRT station Lumpini, and this is on the edge of the wireless intersection. This is where Saturn, Rama 4, and wireless roads all come together. Right next to the MRT station here, these gates were the entrance to the former Suan Lum Night Bazaar. It was a popular night market where you could go shopping for clothes, souvenirs, handicrafts, that kind of thing. There was also a big beer garden where you could watch really loud live music, drink beer, and eat some great street food. It closed around 2012. It also had a music venue called the BC Tiro Hall. And back in 2004, myself and my friend Phil went to see Brian Ferry and the Pretenders. Well, I was here yesterday, these gates were open and I was itching to know where the path leads to. Is it a back entrance to the one Bangkok construction site or does it go somewhere a little bit more interesting?
Wireless Road was built in 1920 and it gets its name from the former Saladin radio transmission tower that was on the corner of Wireless and Rama 4 roads. It was built in 1913 and it hosted the first radio broadcast in Thailand. So we're going to take a walk along Wireless Road from here as far as Saracen intersection. This section of Wireless Road does have an interesting history. Some of it's sleazy and sordid, so we'll get that bit out of the way first. Years ago, one of the exits from Surin Lum Night Bazaar was just behind me. And when you came out of there late at night after a few beers, there'd be taxis and tuk-tuks lined up along here, quoting you extortionate prices to take you places, or they would offer to take you to a sex show or a bar where there were women available. Obviously, you'd politely decline. Over on this side of Wireless Road, next to the park, you had even more sordid activities going on. You had ladies of the night hanging around, rent boys touting for business, shady guys offering you drugs and back then Lumpini Park had a pretty seedy reputation. You'd read about guys getting arrested for having sex with each other, prostitutes servicing clientele in the park, open air sex, flashers exposing themselves to innocent people walking around the park. They did clamp down on it for a while but even nowadays I'm not quite sure that the clandestine activity has been eradicated around here. Right here you've got the construction site of the Wan Bangkok project which in case you didn't know is a self-contained village with business, commercial, retail, residential, hotels, green space that's due to be completed in 2026. That is on the site of the old Surinlum Night Bazaar and the old Lumpini Boxing Stadium which I'll be talking about in the next Vanishing Bangkok video. Then further up Wireless Road, you've got the Australian Embassy and the street alongside that has been demolished. So now you have to go down an alleyway to get to the entrance. And then after that, you've got the Japanese Embassy. There are still a few local communities living down the soys along here. Some of them have been here over a hundred years, wondering now if they're living on borrowed time, given the state and the speed of development around Bangkok, wouldn't surprise me at all. Then you've got Lumpini Police Station, and it's pretty hard to believe they've had all this dodgy activity going on right on their doorstep for so many years, but that's just one of those things we struggle to explain here in Bangkok. We'll leave it at that. And then further along, you've got some patches of land waiting for development, probably worth billions of baht. Across from that is gate one to Lumpini Park, and then we finally get to Saracen intersection. I'm on the bridge here at Saracen intersection. This is the bridge that links the Green Mile to Lumpini Park. Now to celebrate a hundred years of Lumpini Park, they're talking about knocking this bridge down and building a brand new walkway. But this isn't any old walkway. This is a flash looking helter skelter style walkway. According to the article, they got a 500 million baht budget to do that. Now the centenary is in two years time, so we're all going to be waiting with bated breath to see if they actually build this thing. So there are major plans to renovate and rebuild parts of the park to celebrate 100 years of Lumpini Park and I think the park is fine just as it is. A lot of the plans that have been released have not gone down too well and seeing as we're only 14 months away I think they better hurry up. Anyway here's a few pictures to give you an idea of what they have in store.
Well, this is definitely the noisiest area of the park where it runs alongside Rama 4 Road and there's a lot of cars on the road, it's about 5.30. And I would also say that this is probably the least scenic part of Lumpini Park because all you've got is sweaty joggers running by and they probably wouldn't appreciate me filming them. But here is a quick shot of a bunch of sweaty joggers running past. The main gate of Lumpini Park sits on the corner of Saladeng intersection. This is where Rama 4 meets Silom and Rajadamri roads. It's right next to Silom MRT station as well. But on the corner here is the King Rama 6 statue. And it was of course Rama 6 who granted the land for public use back in 1925. But unfortunately he didn't live to see it turned into Thailand's first ever public park. But his statue has stood on the corner proudly for almost a century. I'm on the Rama 4 side of Lumpini Park. It's probably the least amount of fun you'll ever have around here. The pavements are narrow, they're in bad shape. The noise of the traffic is relentless. But as I'm here, I will point out the tall buildings on the other side there. On the corner, you've got the ruins of the Dusitani Hotel. 49 years it was open, iconic reputation. It was once Thailand's tallest building. It's being replaced by something called Dusit Central Park. Some people are calling it optimistically Dusit Thani Part 2, but I'm afraid I can't accept that. It's just another bland hotel shopping mall complex. Next to that is the GPF Tower, the Government Pension Fund building. Then you've got the HSBC building. And then next to that is something of a bit of an architectural icon. It's the Si Fung Fung building. And there is a story behind that one. So just behind me, this is the Rama 4 gate, which is gate three. And to get in, you have to go over a little bridge. And there's a canal here with lots of reptilian activity going on. And I don't mean the Illuminati. I'm on Rama 4 Road and just across behind me on the other side of the road was the location of the old Lumpini Boxing Stadium which opened in 1956. Now there were many notable champions through the decades, many great nights of Muay Thai and boxing. It closed in February 2014 and there's a new Lumpini Stadium out in Bang Ken. 
but I doubt the atmosphere there would match the bloody, sweaty and noisy atmosphere of the old stadium. So if London has Hyde Park, New York has Central Park, Bangkok has Lumpini Park, does this park have what it takes to compete with those other two bigger parks? I would say yes. I mean, it's got all the ingredients you would expect in an urban green space. Trees, greenery of course, lakes, great views, the urban hum in the background, monitor lizards, cats, peace and quiet, tranquility. One thing you can do in Lumpini that you can't do in the other two parks is take a pedlo out on the lake for 40 baht an hour and get up close and personal with the many monitor lizards. And for tourists, I think that is as exciting as getting mugged in Central Park or seeing a homeless person asleep in a tent in Hyde Park. They say that all ginger cats are tom cats, as in male cats. And if I think back through the years of all the ginger cats I've met in all my life, they were all blokes. I'll check in a minute, off camera. I'm going to watch my step around here. This is monitor lizard territory, so one could lumber across my path unexpectedly and I'd fall over it, bang my head and probably die. And then two weeks later, when my corpse is rotten and putrid, lizard will come and have me for dinner. Anyway, what was I saying? I'm in the northwest corner of the park, an area that was once on the radar of the BMA and the BTS. 30 years ago, they had plans to build the SkyTrain maintenance depot and stabling yard in this part of the park. Obviously it didn't happen because there were protests from all sides. Anyway, they chose to build it instead on the location of the old Morchip bus terminal opposite Chattachak Park, and that is where the Morchip BTS station is today. I'm at the intersection of Saracen Road and Rajadharmri Road. We're going to walk down this side of Lumpini Park towards Saladang intersection. This is the shortest part actually, but there are one or two really nice buildings I want to show you, but the SkyTrain's in the way, so it would be difficult to get a good shot. But one place I can get a good shot of is the water towers of the Thai Red Cross AIDS Research Centre. So on this side of Rajadharmri Road, opposite the park, it's all taken up by the King Chulalongkorn Memorial Hospital. It's a huge complex with various faculties, 
departments, old buildings, new buildings. It dates back to 1914. I came here twice in the early 2000s, once to have a head wound dressed and another time to have a Veruca lasered off my foot. So that's my experience of this hospital. I tried to get some good shots of the buildings, but the SkyTrain was a little bit in the way. Anyway, when we get to the bottom, we get to Saladang intersection. Then on the left, you've got the King Rama VI statue and the main gates to Lumpini Park. Saracen Road runs along the northern edge of the Lumpini Park between Wireless and Rajadamri Roads. There are two sides to the street. One of them is shady, under trees alongside the park. The other is a lot brighter. But I'll have to call up Van Morrison and get his permission because he's notoriously miserable. I need to ask him, is it okay for me to walk on the bright side of the road? Well, the pavements on the shady side of the road are pretty terrible to negotiate. And this area here absolutely stinks. You can see the metal fence has been corroded away by years of people coming here to take a piss. And there are still dodgy goings on around here at night. I'll tell you about that a little bit later. Well, there is something playing on my mind and I couldn't sleep all last night thinking about this and that is had the BTS 30 years ago built their maintenance depot and stabling yard on this side of Lumpini Park would the real estate and property prices on that side be as high as they are now on Soi Langsawan and Soi Tonson it would put a bit of a dampener on the view if you look out of your penthouse every morning over Lumpini Park and see a bunch of trains parked there. Unless, of course, you like trains. I mean, I would absolutely love that. This area hasn't always been about posh penthouses, flash cars, vintage fine wine and high so fusion food. Once upon a time this area was a prolific red light district in the 1950s and 60s. There were brothels, dodgy hotels and dodgy people hanging around. There were various cleanups over the years but if you come through here at night nowadays you'll see curb crawlers and ladies of the night offering their services. But hey, this is the oldest profession in the world and someone's got to make a living. I present to you the biggest cat in Lumpini Park. She's absolutely lovely. She just lazes around the park, getting attention off people. Now she's clawing my knee, sharpening her claws on my jeans. You may recognise her from two other videos, and this is her third appearance. So I'm thinking maybe she could have a more prominent role on the channel. She could read the news or something. And to celebrate her winning this prize, I'm going to give her some food. So I got her some Felix, and she loves it. And I've got to say, by the way, thank you to everyone 
who donates for the cat food. This is where some of the money goes. And of course, she's very grateful, as are all the other cats around Bangkok that get the food. Well, over the last few days, I've escaped the worst of the weather, luckily, but not today. Never mind, it's the end of the video anyway. So I'm just going to say thanks for watching. Please do subscribe if you haven't already done so. If you want to support me and support the channel, you can do so via the Buy Me A Coffee link on the screen up there, or you can join the channel and become a member. That just leads me to say thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you sooner than you think.